Hey what's going on guys, Chris here with a small video today just going over a couple of the new maps, Achibaba and Cape Hells, coming in Battlefield 1's Turning Tides DLC. I managed to hop into the CTE over the weekend for a bit, captured some gameplay, and I've already gone over all the weapons a while ago in another video where you got to see those two maps in a very early white box testing stage. But this time the textures have been applied and it's all looking pretty fancy, especially when you've got HDR switched on. It was a lot easier to see how the new maps are going to play out in the final DLC this time, as although the white box testing update gave us a general idea of the map's layouts, because this time we could see how they'd look with textures, this actually helped to give us a better idea of the map's cover. Of course, this meant that soldiers didn't stand out as much against those white surfaces, making the maps feel a bit different, which is really important when it comes to balancing, as it means those assault weapons seemed a lot more useful this time around. But just in case you don't know anything about the maps, they're both going to be featuring battles between the British and the Ottoman Empire, taking place on the Turkish coast. Uh, the two we got to try out didn't seem to feature any land vehicles, so if you're sick of getting wiped out by tanks every couple of minutes, then you'll probably like these maps quite a lot. Achibaba is based on the British assault against the Ottomans on the Gallipoli Peninsula, and it seems to be an infantry only map, with the British spawn being at the bottom of the hillside which gradually inclines up to the Ottoman spawn, and apart from the two deployment areas, there's a total of five capture flags between, in the Conquest game mode. The first one nearest to the British Empire spawn is the Stronghold, which is one of the lowest points on the map, being at the bottom of the hill, and it has a few pathways leading to the map centre, though if the Ottoman team have taken all the other points then they can actually pin the British down in this area, which actually happened a few times when I was playing. The B flag sat within Blood Valley is a really open area with a few trenches and ditches running around it, which gives players a few limited safe access routes. Advancing outside of those trenches can often be a pretty bad idea, as unless you've got some smoke grenades equipped, you'll be easy pickings for a scout or medic, with cover being sparse and sight lines above the trenches being very open. Now slap bang in the middle of the map is the C flag in an area called Forward Redoubt, and this is basically where a lot of the action is going to take place, with quite a lot of pathways leading here from the other flags dotted around the map. And it's also what I like to call one of Battlefield 1's hectic zones, where you're going to have to be on your toes and keep an eye out for your enemies flanking from the different routes, as a lot of people will naturally want to come here and take over that sea flag, with it being literally the central point of the map. There's usually going to be some pretty epic clashes here with the enemy team, so you're going to have to be prepared to fight at all times. Just above and slightly to the right of this flag, you'll find Esky Kale, which is basically the D flag surrounded by a bunch of ruins and rocks, acting as some really useful solid cover pieces. This can be a good point for assault players to take over, with sight lines generally being a bit shorter. And this is also where the Elite Kit was known to spawn in for players to turn into the new Infiltrator class. The last capture point on Achibaba is located on the right side of the map next to the Ottoman spawn, and this is where you'll find Narrow's Lookout, which is literally a lookout, watching over a pretty large area where enemies are likely to advance from. There's also a few pathways which run around the outsides of the lookout, giving sneaky players the option to flank the point and this is one of the highest points of the map, with it being located at the top of the hill. As for Cape Hells, which is the second map taking place on the Gallipoli Peninsula, this is still mainly going to be infantry based too, but although there aren't any tanks and land vehicles, there's still going to be a few planes and boats on the map that you'll have to keep an eye on, especially the bombers which can really wreak havoc on players running around in those narrow trenches, linking a few of the capture points. The British Empire start on the left side of the map in boats, you need to travel over to the A flag and storm the beach, which is always a really fun way to kick off a match. The B flag can be found not far from here within the ruins of a destroyed fort, and just north of this you'll be able to find the C flag, which is basically found in a small network of trenches, and both of these capture points offer a nice range of sight lines, as the ruins and trenches allow for some deadly close range skirmishes, but there's also a lot of open lines of sight here too, for people who just want to snipe and use rifles over longer distances. The D flag is just to the right of the B flag, connected by those trenches at the top of the hill, and here you'll see a small farm with a couple of buildings which can be used for cover. The buildings also have a few windows overlooking the surrounding area where attackers might be advancing from, but it's best not to get too comfy in there as you'll be easy pickings for an assault player with an SMG or rocket gun to blast down those walls. As we move along the map, we'll find two battery emplacements at the bottom right hand side of the landscape along the coastline, which can be accessed on foot or by landing craft from the water. These two points house both the E and F flags, offering some close quarter battles around the huge artillery guns which tower over the area, along with some longer sight lines around the perimeters for longer ranged engagements. And last of all is the G flag, located at the top right of the map on Hill 141. 
Here you'll find more trenches and areas better suited for shorter range weaponry. Definitely one of the most rewarding ones to capture from the enemy team. So overall I enjoyed playing both of these maps, especially in the last update with all the textures and stuff, and I think I like Cape Hells a bit more than Achibaba. I just thought it was a bit more interesting. But they're both pretty good maps that I'm excited to hop back into soon, and it's been confirmed that they're both going to be combined to form their own operation called Gallipoli, which is going to be making its way into the Battlefield 1 Turning Ties DLC coming on December 11th 2017 for Premium Pass members. But that's it for now guys, like I said before, it's not a very long video but I just wanted to cover these maps and let you know what they're generally going to be like. I'll be covering more on Turning Tides and all of those swanky new weapons coming up in the DLC soon. So give me a like if the video helped and subscribe for all that new content. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next episode.